Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Okay, tonight I, I said Cardboard Coat Check, that's what we say for most of our unboxing videos, because usually I'm unboxing board games that come in cardboard boxes and have lots of cardboard components. Well, tonight it's more of a, I, I don't know, I can't think of a wood base, but it's a wooden box we're opening and I don't know how to tie that to our whole hotel room theme. So a, a tabletop bellhop special delivery. Um, a I don't know. I, I really don't know a better name. If you have a better name, let us know in the comments. And then the next time I have to unbox something that's mostly wood, we can rename the show to instead of cardboard coat check to something else. I have said board game bag check. But again, this is a big mystery box escape room. So it's not as much a board game either. So even that doesn't quite work. Um, it's, 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 it's a luggage. It's, it's the luggage. It's a check-in. We're, we're going to do a check-in of this piece of luggage there. It's a luggage. Check. Welcome to a tabletop bellhop luggage bag check. Does that work? Anyway, doesn't matter. What we're here for is to look at what's in this box. So first off, I have to explain what this is. So what I have here is from Hunt a Killer. That is the name of the company and they make murder mystery Escape room in a box, solve puzzle solving, um, including puzzle games and murder mystery nights. This is one of uh, their biggest, um, most expensive, and most impressive sets. This is the Agatha Christie Mystery at Hunter's Lodge, specifically the deluxe edition. Now, huge thanks to Hunt a Killer for sending me a review copy of this. So, now what I want to do is show it off. So first off, like, look at the size of this thing. This is an actual wooden box with, you know, copper hinges and the big HP on the front, which any Agatha Christie fan should know stands for Hercule Perot. I will note that it's locked at the bottom and well, we haven't solved it. So I have no idea what's in here, but like there's literally little metal things. And I'll show this to you a little closer up in the box in a second. Uh, there is the bottom. Would have been nice to have some little feet on here, but fair enough. But it's huge. It's not overly heavy, but it's not light either. But it's not like I can tell there's not a bunch of metal in here and things like that. So here we go. We're going to put this this way. I'm going to tip the camera down, move the mic out of the way, and we're going to go through the contents of this box. Now, from what I understand, I'm not going to spoil anything by doing this. But just in case, if you don't want to see what's in here, if we've already sold you on it, right? It already seems cool. Like, wow, check it out. You can jump ahead. We'll put timestamps in the video so you can jump ahead to where I share my final thoughts with the box closed. Though I do encourage you to at least wait till I open the top just so you see that. But I fully understand that part of the escape room experience, the escape room box experience is the discovery of seeing what's in the contents. So I fully understand if you skip ahead, feel free. But from now on, we're going to open things up and I'm going to be unabashed about it. So here you have Hercule Perot. Hercule Perot, um, chest that came with this. Um, and honestly, this is how it showed up. I had a big, you know, cardboard shipping box, opened it up. There was some bubble wrap and stuff protecting it. And this is it. So like, there's no box for this game. This is the box. And I got to say, like, look at this. Just looking at that. Okay. What do we have here? What sticks out immediately? So I'm going to start off with this. So we have the rule book, right? The game manual, the, the how to play with this chest. And we open it up and it's got an introduction and an inventory list. Now, having played other Escape Room in a Box experiences, I do recommend going through this and making sure you have everything here. Part of me is tempted to make a checklist of this while we do this here, but you don't want to watch me taking the time to do that. And then we have the objective, how to set up, how to get started, how to play couple hints on the bottom to get you going. Then there's a puzzle guide and the solution. And then this scares me. The story continues. What? There's another chapter after this master box. We'll see. This says further investigations also. And then we have the credits on the back, which that's a lot of credits for, for a box full of stuff. All right. So what I'm going to try to do is put everything face down off to the side here so that I can put it back in the same place it came out of. Uh, mainly because my family is hoping to play this tomorrow night. And I want to be able to put it back in. So we have an envelope. I'm not going to read any of this. I don't want to spoil anything. So we have we have a letter on some nice thick newsprint. It's kind of yellowed. I dig this just because here's a second letter. And it's obviously written by someone else on a different style of typewriter and a different style of paper. So we're going to put that down. 
So here, I thought this was cool. I knew this was in here. This is your solution code. Don't open till you're sure you know who the killer is. So this is your, you got it. You've solved the mystery. Open this up. Find out what happened. Of course, I'm not going to open that up. Oh, I will jump back just a second because the first sheet of paper was not two-sided. This one is. I don't want to leave that up too long for people to start solving things. So there's second side. Then there's this. Then we have a newspaper. Just a clipping. Doesn't actually fold out to a full newspaper page. But it is two-sided. So we have two pieces. It's got some hand-drawn art mixed with actual artwork. You've even got ads on the back. Nice. So that's in here. Then we have the initial report of the investigation. One-sided. Witness statements. Again, I don't want to spoil stuff, so I'm going to go through these quickly. There's a bunch of witness statements. Again, I'm going to try to put this stuff so I can get back. We have a postcard with some writing on the back. It's a lot of stuff in here, holy cow. We have a floor plan with some notes on the back. So I'm only gonna open up half of this because again, I don't wanna spoil too much. So we have, we have a map of, a, of some form of building with a ring and burnt paper found here. There are some notes on that. We've got a smudged up sheet with some notes on it. We have a, it looks like a police, police report here. Another part of this report. Yeah, this is the same report. Single-sided. An army service record. Military history sheet. And it's even got like the, the taped on pictures of the people. We have something with some redacted information. Oh, wow. Okay, look at that. There's an actual diary in here. Like with stuff shoved in it. Handwritten. It's not filled out. I'm not going to pull that out. I don't want to, again, I don't want to spoil too much, but I want everyone to see what you get in here. Very cool. We have a envelope sealed. We're keeping it that way. Okay, here we go. Here's some of the shininess. Look at that. That is a signet ring, like a full on metal. I don't know what I can bang this against. Look at that. That is just so dang cool. No component in any exit game I've ever opened before felt this solid. And this isn't going to be my favorite part because I know some of the other stuff that's in here. All right. Interesting. I kind of don't want to give it away now. Like there's stuff stuck in here, but I'll hold it up. What you have in there is a drinking flask. So there's some kind of drinking flask in an actual, like this feels like leather, maybe pleather case. With some notes. I don't want to ruin this piece. I'm keeping it together. Oh, and I don't even see one of the things I knew what should be in here. Some more notes. A uh, puppy dog envelope that, again, is sealed. An invitation. And check this out. There's literally a pennant in here. A, a literal pennant. Like, that is awesome. I'm going to hang that up in my game room when we're done this puzzle. Very cool. And that appears to be it. Despite that, it feels like it's supposed to come up, but I don't think it is. All right, we're going to leave it at that. What I didn't see is some of the stuff that's highlighted on um, on the web page. That still makes me wonder. Maybe, though, once you get under here, you can just see it. All right. Very cool. All right, now we're going to try to put all this back in approximately the way it was. Flipping pennant. A drinking flask, like little notes on it. Put that in signet ring. Oh, it won't even fit on my pinky, but hey. Puppy dog notes. More notes here. And then a little envelope, which was very clearly this way. The diary. And a whole ton of papers. And what I'm going to do is just try to do that. And it worked. Now let's hope this shuts. So there we go. So I will note I did lose one little tassel off of the uh, off of the pennant there. So be careful when you're playing around with that pennant. So there you have it. What you get with the Agatha Christie Mystery of Hunter's Lodge Collector's Edition box. 
or at least what I was able to see now without having solved any of the puzzles. So I am going to slide this up just so you can see there is a combination lock here. I have to assume at least one of the puzzles in there is going to open this lock and it's already locked at the beginning. Like I cannot open this up. I still think there might be more of a false bottom there because that didn't feel that thick. But you know what? That's going to be part of solving this game, which we're going to do another night. So there you have it. What you get in the hunt a killer Agatha Christie's The Mystery of Hunter's Lodge Collector's Edition. A extremely impressive, solid wooden box filled with a ton of stuff, which I'm not going to open just in case you skipped ahead to not see the spoilers, but I want to. There is a lot of really neat stuff in there. I know there's even more cool stuff in there. Uh, if you go to the Hunt a Killer website, they show some images of some of the stuff inside that I was fully expecting to find and I didn't, which means it's either in this bottom or there's another trick to this box that I haven't figured out yet. I am extremely impressed by the quality of this box, of the goods in the box, of the various types of things. Uh, you've got, it's not just a bunch of paper and it's not just a bunch of cheap pieces of plastic. You have a bunch of, I would say, artifacts that come with this, including some very cool physical mementos that I think anyone who finishes this box is going to want to keep um, just as knickknacks, right? Tchotchkes to keep in memor memorandum of having played this. I know a couple of them in there are definitely going to end up in my game room when we're done with this box. Extremely impressed. Thank you again, Hunt a Killer. Again, but we're going to be playing this and I will be sharing my thoughts on it on social media where I can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Eventually, we will be doing up reviews in three formats of this box. We're going to have a written review over at the blog, tabletopbellhop.com. Then we're going to do a video review, which will first be recorded on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop during one of our podcast episodes, but will be released video on demand on YouTube. So you'll be able to find it there, youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop. Um, then there's also going to be the audio podcast, which again, we recorded it on Twitch. I don't know how quickly we'll get to it. It depends how many nights it takes to get through this. This is something we'll only be able to work on once a week. So we'll see how long it takes. Um, once that goes live, we do the live recording and then it gets edited by my awesome editor, Sean, who will then cut it down and put out an audio podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. I have named the tabletop bellhop gaming podcast. I have no idea what episode it'll be, but it'll be coming. Uh, if you did dig this video and you've checked out our other content, you like what we do, it'd be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and tipped your bellhop. That's it for me and this. We never did really come up with a better name. Um, tabletop bellhop uh, steamer trunk surprise. Nah, it's not so great. Comments below. Next time I open up a nice escape room in a box, I need, I need something that ties to hotel rooms and escape rooms. Maybe we'll figure something out. Good day and game on.